Now at 6, I'm streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. Authorities in Fayette and Warren County make a cocaine bust worth millions in street value. Several propositions pass after last night's constitutional amendment election. And a woman in Goliad appointed to a board of directors position by Governor Greg Abbott. And we're getting ready for the big change. Now tomorrow we'll get up to 80 degrees, but by tomorrow night the rain comes in and then on Friday you'll need a winter coat. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on. And the Bay District round of playoffs starts tomorrow. We have a preview of some of the top teams in the area in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Monday, law enforcement officers arrested 26-year-old Tracy Hicks Jr. He faces drug charges and fraud charges. He's at the Victoria County Jail in lieu of bonds totaling $50,000. While working a joint drug ban operation with the Wharton Police Department, Fayette County deputies stopped a heavy machinery trailer on U.S. Highway 69. Authorities say they found 100 kilos of cocaine with a street value of about $10 million. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office is looking for 32-year-old Jonathan Hester of Edna. He's wanted on assault charges. If you can help, call 361-782-3541. Governor Greg Abbott appointed Shannon Calhoun of Goliad to the Texas Health Services Authority Board of Directors. The authority is responsible for coordinating the implementation of Health Information Exchange in Texas. Calhoun served as Vice President of Network Development for the National Rural Accountable Care Consortium and Caravan Health. She served as CEO of Southeast Texas Health System for over 20 years. Edna voters rejected Proposition A on their ballot Tuesday. 76% of the voters turned down a proposal regarding a new sports complex for Edna ISD. And in honor of Veterans Day, Saturday, the VFW Post 4146 is offering a free burger to veterans tonight until 8 o'clock. Just show proof of your service and you'll get some burgers, chips, a drink, and a pastry. They're at 2001 Lova, south of East Rio Grande Street and just north of Lone Tree Road. The Victoria Veterans Council has announced the Veterans Day Parade this Saturday is canceled due to inclement weather. Instead, a ceremony will take place at the VFW Post 4146 at 2001 Lova Drive at 11 a.m. Saturday, followed by a lunch. And speaking of weather... That's right. Let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis, who can tell us more about the rain that's coming. You bet. And I want to salute the Veterans Council because I think it was a great idea. I love a parade. I thought it would be great, but we have so many elderly uh, veterans, we don't want them getting out there in the cold, wet weather. Now, I show you this map because these are the current temperatures across the state. Yes, we're in the upper 70s, almost 80 degrees. It's already 60 degrees in Amarillo because the frontal system has passed through there and it will be visiting us tomorrow night. We'll be talking of all about the changing weather coming up in just a moment. A Houston, a Houston restaurant owner believes she was targeted because of an Israeli flag hanging outside her building. Taste of Tel Aviv was broken into early Wednesday morning. Owner Pam Bayless says the burglary bypassed cash to destroy some of her Jewish prayer books. Houston police reported on X, formerly known as Twitter, that after an investigation, it appears the burglary was not motivated by hate, but the investigation is still ongoing. Shelter-in-place orders were lifted in Polk and San Jacinto counties after a worker was hurt in a chemical plant explosion and fire in Shepherd, north of Houston. KTRK reports fire agencies used foam to contain a large fire at Sound Resource Solutions, which makes glue and paint remover solvents. One worker was hurt in what they called a freak accident caused by a forklift incident. He was left with burns to his arms and face. He's with the right people and they're taking care of him and he's doing good. He's uh, he was worried about us, so he's he's doing good. He's going to be home with his family this evening. Residents within a mile were urged to shelter in place as a precaution, but emergency workers say the surrounding air is not toxic. 
The estimated voter turnout for Tuesday's constitutional amendment election is 14.4 percent of registered voters. Texas Secretary of State Jane Nelson reports this is the highest turnout for a constitutional election since 2005, with more than 2.5 million Texans casting a ballot. The Texas Tribune reports Texas homeowners and businesses will get potentially thousands of dollars cut from their property tax bills after voters approve Proposition 4, which was approved by over 80 percent of the voters. Texas voted to approve Proposition 9, which will add billions to the Texas Retired Teachers Pension. 84 percent of Texas voters were in favor of Proposition 9. The proposition would send $3.45 billion to the teacher retirement system of Texas. Over a quarter of the system's beneficiaries receive less than $1,000 each month. Proposition 9 will address this by providing an increase of up to 6 percent. With the passage of Proposition 7 by Texas Voters Tuesday, the Public Utility Commission announced it will run the Texas Energy Fund, providing grants and loans to finance the construction, maintenance, modernization, and operation of electric facilities in Texas. The fund will also provide funding for the installation of backup power for critical facilities in public health and safety. So here is your Vera poll this evening. What proposition got you to the polls? According to our results, it looks like the highest one stands with teacher retirement. Oh, actually, no, home tax mm -hmm. at 54%. Thank you for voting. We're going to have an update later on 25 News Now at 10. Now, the whistleblower lawsuit against Attorney General Ken Paxton once again put on pause. The Texas Tribune reports Paxton's office as Burnett County Judge Avon Stubbs for emergency temporary restraining order, claiming the whistleblowers violated the tentative settlement they reached in February by asking the Supreme Court to revisit the case. Stubbs agreed to an order pause in the case for at least a week until November 14th, which is when a hearing on Paxton's petition for a temporary injunction is scheduled. Nate Paul, the Austin real estate investor at the center of the Ken Paxton impeachment, now faces more federal charges. KXAN reports federal prosecutors charged the 36-year-old Paul with four new counts related to wire fraud. Paul's new charges include one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and three counts of wire fraud. These are in addition to the initial eight counts of false statements. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us. We have your election night takeaways coming up on 25 News Now at 6. What the results indicate about next year's presidential election. Also ahead, a pair of whooping cranes are spotted near Aranzas Pass. Air Force veteran John Tate is your military hero for the month of October. Tate was born in Freeport and moved to Victoria when he was six years old. All of Tate's brothers ended up joining the military as well. I had three, uh, three brothers. My oldest brother joined the Navy because Dad was in the Navy during the war. Uh, my younger brother joined the Marine Corps. He liked hitting people. And my baby brother partied until the uh, Army drafted him. And sent him to Nam, but I was smart. I joined the Air Force because I wanted an education. And I got it the first day of boot camp it started. Tate was talented with engines and was a mechanic, so he figured that's what he would do in the service, but to his surprise, he would end up doing something a whole lot different. Well, I thought I would get jet engine school or diesel school, but I scored too high on the entry test. So they, top 10%, they sent me to weather school. So he would go on to become a meteorologist for the Air Force and ended up loving it. But I loved it. I, I really did. I, when I got into it, it it's, it's very interesting. I love it. I, today, I still I hear thunder. I'm outside looking. You know. Tate almost was sent over to fight in Vietnam, but since he had two brothers over there already, the service gave him the option to go elsewhere. I said, well, what are my choices? And one of them was uh, in Newfoundland. Another one was in Ice Station in North Pole, and another one was Alaska, and I said, don't you have anything warmer? Yeah, take the two-year tour in Puerto Rico. We're staging B-52s out of Puerto Rico to Vietnam. So stationed in Puerto Rico, he was sent all over. We did rocket experiments there in Puerto Rico. 
it's not secret anymore, but, uh, and I, I got sent, like I said, in, in several different places, different airplanes. Mm -hmm. I, it was it was interesting, but they were starving us to death. We didn't get paid anything back then. His official title was Weather Observer and covered a lot of territory. Every hour you transmitted an observation, and if the weather changed, you, you transmitted a special observation. Mm -hmm. And it went out all over the world. Oh, wow. On teletypes. So that was, you know, in a nutshell. Tate had to endure some tough moments. Yeah, the first time we pulled a, a corpse out, all burnt to crap. Another one I pulled out, he'd been in the water for about three days. And uh, fish and the crabs had got to him. Things like that, sticky. You'll never forget that. But and how hot, how hot the flames are when you know when that jet fuel starts burning. And his return home from the Vietnam War wasn't a warm welcome. Walking down the jetway, I got a duffel bag on my shoulder, a B4 bag in my other hand, and people were cussing me and spitting on my uniform. And I could not believe this was the same country. And it bothered me, so I put all that stuff in the closet. Once back in the crossroads, Tate worked various jobs from dealerships, shipyards, to driving trucks for his brother and Union Carbide. He and his wife have been happily married for 41 years, and he says their grandkids and great-grandkids keep them busy. Yeah, until Christmas time, that cost a fortune, man. <laughs> He's also a carpenter. He's even built his own house and likes to fish and hunt. We go out there whenever we feel... You know, we need to get close to nature. Out in the middle of nowhere, you can actually hear the wind blow. He's also very proud of his 20 years as commander of the Victoria County Funeral Detail, serving any veteran from the crossroads to be sure they're at their funeral. I'm ambivalent about my time here as uh, commander of the funeral detail. I cannot say I enjoyed it. I can say it gave me a sense of fulfillment and the guys who were on that detail, every one of them were on there as long as I was, some of them longer. And they were steady, they were reliable, and they were good men, and they did a good job. I can never say enough about uh, the Victoria County funeral detail. So thank you, John Tate, for your dedication to your country and all of the time served. Adam Seibel, KAVU-TV 25 News Now. It was an off-year election, but voters across the country who cast ballots Tuesday sent big messages. Now, while Democrats marked key victories in several states, a series of new polls show a rocky road ahead for President Biden as he runs for re-election. A victory for reproductive rights activist in Ohio. Winning was our only option, and we did it together. 
Voters casting their ballots Tuesday to enshrine the right to an abortion in Ohio's Constitution. Just the latest state to do so in the wake of the Supreme Court's 2022 decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And in Virginia, Democrats swept the state legislature in a rebuke of Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin, who sought to pursue what he called reasonable abortion restrictions if the GOP took control of both chambers. Voters are sending a message to all of us, Democrats and Republicans, that the number one issue that they care about is freedom. Abortion access proving a driving force for voters, which could be a boon to Democratic prospects in 2024, even as Republicans frame the results as wins for states' rights. I think you got to let it be decided state by state, and that's exactly what's happening. But despite party victories, polling of registered voters shows the sour mood in the country is posing trouble for President Joe Biden's re-election chances, coming up short in hypothetical matchups against former President Donald Trump and other GOP candidates. What we're going to continue to do is highlight the record of accomplishments that he has and draw that contrast between what he puts forward and brings to the table and what Donald Trump or any other Republican on the MAGA side of this uh, puts forward. Deep red Kentucky's newly re-elected Democratic Governor Andy Bashir says the key to victory is focusing on the things that impact people's daily lives. They want someone that, again, is going to try every single day to make their life just a little bit better. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Whooping cranes are completing their 2,500-mile journey from Canada and arriving on the Texas coast. Texas Parks and Wildlife tells KSAT the first pair of whooping cranes were seen flying toward the Aransas National Wildlife Refuge near San Antonio Bay November 1st. The bird's arrival is about 10 days later than in 2022. They will remain on Texas coastal marshes for the summer. That's great. I mean, they fly right over us. It's amazing. It's just down the, down the road. Well, folks, it's 76 degrees right about now. We managed to get up into the 80s today, 86 the high. Um, 76 is the average temperature this time of year. But guess what? By Friday, the high temperature is only going to be in the mid to low 60s. It's a chilly, wet, cold weekend, and we'll be talking about that coming up in a moment.
Well, good evening, everybody. I forgot to tell you, we haven't had any rain so far in November, uh, so it's been zero, zero, but for the year since January 1, we've had 31.24 inches. That's still about four inches below normal uh, for, the, for the year. Of course, that's the 30 year average. But within the next seven days, I think we're gonna get maybe one or two inches out of this uh, next storm system that's coming into our direction. Pretty good looking day today. We got into the 80s. Tomorrow we'll be in the 80s early in the day, but by nighttime, uh, things are gonna be really different. First of all, you can see how the cloud deck's coming up from the Pacific Southwest. That's number one. Number two, right about here, you can see how the snow is beginning to develop. That's the area of low pressure that we're looking for. Um, you can see the snow already in Colorado, which will be dropping down into northern portions of New Mexico. And then you say, well, what about that frontal system? Well, when you consider that it's 80 in San Angelo and 60 in Amarillo, the frontal system is right there, okay? So that's going to be heading in our direction. In fact, while we're going to be mostly waiting on Thursday, most of North Texas is going to be in on the rain activity. Now, uh, the storm is uh, gone. That used to be called, um, I can't remember. <laughs> it, was a, it was a Pacific storm that fell apart. Um, uh, Wanda, we'll call her Wanda. Anyway, uh, it fell apart and you can see how the moisture, however, is being uh, caught up into the westerly winds, which are very strong. Now, this is a classic uh, El Nino thing. When we have westerly winds up at the higher levels where the airplanes fly, you can see how strong those winds are. That's pumping up the moisture that's going to help get us the heavier rain tomorrow. So here we go uh, for Thursday um, morning, okay, tomorrow morning. We're going to be looking at rain rolling into West Texas. By Thursday afternoon, you're going to see pretty much Dallas to Del Rio getting the rain activity and we beginning to get picked that up as well. Then we go into Friday and you can see how it's pretty significant over our area. So we'll be getting a pretty good stack of rain around our region. That's Friday and portions of Saturday as well, because you can see how that track, basically what we call the tropical tap, uh, is going to continue giving us the rain opportunity. The cool air comes in on the bottom, then the warm air rolls on top of it, and then we get that condensation and rainfall. We're here with Future Tracker all the way, as far as we can go, all the way to Saturday, and you can see how the Victoria and the Crossroads looking for one to two inches of rainfall, and that's going to be really good if we get that. No more than that, because then we go to flooding. So just about that. All right, here are your low temperatures for tonight, only in the mid 60s. For tomorrow, we will get up into the low 80s, but that's uh, early in the day. By noontime, the clouds will start thickening up. I don't expect any rain showers around here until after sundown, but it's at midnight when the front blows through and everything will be changing for us as that front comes down into our area, gives us a cold north wind, and then the overrunning on top of it is gonna give us that uh, rather drizzly kind of condition. So here's your play day planner for those of you in Port Lavaca, getting from 72 up to 78 with a little bit of cloud cover, actually a lot of bit of cloud cover. And then in Cuero, 69 to 75 with the shower activity coming in late in the day. And then here it is, I'm calling an alert day for Friday because all of you are gonna be dealing with the rain, the wind and the, well, okay, not the snow, but the rain, the wind and the 80% chance of rain. And get to, make sure you find your coat because you're gonna need it Friday morning, especially to wrap up the kids going to school. That's your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code, love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac, and now here's Sports Director Gina Perez. Thanks, Karina. The high school football postseason starts Thursday and it's a packed schedule. We hear from a few of the stars after the break.
At a crossroads, the Refugio Bobcats are the highest ranked team in the crossroads area and have aspirations of making it back to the big dance later this December. The Bobcats have only lost one game all season, but other than that have dominated in every aspect. Refrio made it to the state title game last season where they fell 55 to 27 against the Holly Bearcats. Junior quarterback Keelan Brown said every victory, including a state title, would not be enough for him. Brown said he's trying to win state and then go play at the next level. That, that's really what's on our mind. So if we don't get that ring, then it's all, it's all for nothing. All that we did from the beginning to now, it don't mean nothing. You know, so every, every year in August, we, we have one goal, and that's to go get a ring. And we're going to go get that ring. The Bobcats are a year older and more experienced than last season. This group has been playing with each other since the playground days, and senior receiver Kai Whitmore was not on the 2019 state championship team, but he's eager to be one of the best teams to go through Refugio. But in order to do that, they're going to have to win the title first. Another team that has tradition of winning is the Cuero Gobblers, and sports reporter Zach Brown sat down with the Gobblers about how they can bring home their fifth state title. It's playoff time in Texas for teams like the district champion Cuero Gobblers. Making it here is just the first step to getting where they really want to go, but they know how quickly things can change. Last year, they were just minutes away from being ousted in the by district round and a few plays away from making it to state. This year, they want to finish the job. That means hitting the ground running beginning Thursday. Everybody you play from here on out has a chance to win, and uh, if you don't get it done, then, then you're going to go home. The road to a state championship begins in Pflugerville for an eager Cuero Gobbler team that has made it to the state semis the last two years. But many outside of Cuero had a lot of questions as to whether or not they'd be ready for another year of dominance. The Gobblers responded by going undefeated in the regular season using doubt as more fuel to the fire. I think the fact that we are uh, doubted, I think that, you know, ruffles some feathers, you know, and not being picked to win the region or do anything like that, I think we have something to prove to some people. This year we came back and we all just bonded together as a team and we we feel good together and we trust each other. And off the court. Head coach Fikach says the new group of seniors did a great job of taking the reins of the program. Both sides of the football appear to be just as good as last year's team. Star QB Nataro jokes that the defense has bailed them out at times this year, but all jokes aside, that defense is a nightmare to opposing offenses. On the defense side, we're just fast and physical. We like to force turnovers, and our saying is bend but don't break. Sometimes we give up yards, but as long as they don't score, they can't win. Zach Brown, KVU TV 25, News Now Sports. Well, that's your sports. Don and Karina, back to you. Thanks, Gina. We're going to be back in a moment. Florida made progress this year with a record number of sea turtle nests. This year's sea turtle nesting season broke records in South Florida. Based on counts from March 1st to October 31st, a record-breaking 4,300 nests were found along most of the coastline in Broward County. This year was also the first time that numbers were up for all species of turtles in that area. You know, on the crossroads, we got sea turtle nests, yep. and we've got 
whooping cranes coming yep. in. Yep. Now we got those and then in. by mm -hmm. Thursday night, we got what coming in? Uh, north wind with north colder wind. weather. Oh, yeah, boy. All oh. that's coming in. It's, it's a <laughs> sign of the seasons, yeah. So, folks, so tomorrow we will get up into the 80s early in the day, but by uh, sundown, we should start seeing some showers arrive, and I'll be tracking them coming all the way from uh, North Texas. Uh, but the front won't be here until about midnight, so it'll be Friday morning. And you'll be looking for your jacket and wondering, how do I bundle up the kids to go to school? The high temperature on Friday is 62 with pretty much rain all day long. I've called it an alert day because all of you are going to be inconvenienced by the rain, the wind, and what else? And the uh, colder weather. Oh, boy. All at one time. All at one time. <laughs> all right, Mag, thank you. And thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.